This is the Garmin Phoenix 7 and it's the latest in a long line of the successful Phoenix series. But why wouldn't you just get this, the Epix? Let's find out. Garmin were kind enough to send me this unit for review, but this video is not sponsored and I do not get to keep the watch afterwards. Let's start with the elephant in the room. The Phoenix 7 and the Epix Gen 2 are essentially the same watch. They look the same, they've got the same internals, but they've got one big difference. Rather than make the same video twice and bore you all, I will just link to the Epix video that is up here and down here, which explains all of the features of the Epix that are the same as those that are on the Phoenix 7. The things that are different, I'm going to tell you about now. The design of the Phoenix 7 and the Epix Gen 2 are identical for most models. Aside from this brownish bezel inside, but we'll get to that later. Dimensions and materials are the same for both on the 47 millimeter version, and they're both made from fiber reinforced polymer, titanium, and or stainless steel. The Phoenix 7, however, also comes in two further sizes, one smaller and one larger. The smaller one is 42 millimeters and the larger one is 51 millimeters. With the 42 millimeter version being a hair thinner than the 47 millimeters being 14.1 millimeters thick and the 51 millimeter version being a hair thicker being 14.9 millimeters. The weight of the Phoenix 7 is also roughly in the ballpark of the Epix going from a minimum of 58 grams all the way up to a maximum of 89 grams and that's including straps. You can also get the Phoenix in three different variants. The standard, the solar and the sapphire solar. There are a total of 22 different color, size and variant combinations that you can get on the Phoenix 7. This is the 47 millimeter sapphire solar edition in black DLC titanium. Depending on the size and the model that you want to pick up, not all colors and variants are available in all combinations. You need to go through the website. There's a bunch of choice. Just look at what you can have in each category. Whilst the Phoenix and the Epix share the same design for the 47mm and larger models, the 42mm Phoenix 7 has a slightly different design. It's got a less rugged looking bezel with no visible screws compared to the larger models. The Phoenix 7 uses the same quick fit watch straps as the Epix, although again they're going to be different on the different sizes. The Phoenix 7 is just as waterproof as the Epix with the same 10 atmospheres or roughly 100 meters depth capability. For the first time in a Phoenix watch, you can now control it with touch. That's right, it has a touch screen. The implementation of the touch screen works in a very similar way to that on the Epix. The main difference being the screen underneath it. But more on that in a minute. The screen is either a 1.2, 1.3 or 1.4 inch color transflective memory in pixel display. This is the same type of display that you'll see on a bunch of other Garmin watches aside from the touch part of course. The Forerunner series has it, the Phoenix series has it, the Vivo Active series has it. If you've owned or used a Garmin in the last few years, it's likely to have had the same memory and pixel transflective display as this, the 245 Forerunner. They're clear, they work great in direct sunlight. I have no complaints about the quality of the screen. The only problem is it's in comparison to this. The Phoenix 7 screen is nowhere near as bright as this, the Epix AMOLED display, and it's not nearly as sharp either. Brightness for the Phoenix 7 screen can be adjusted from 100% down to 10% in 10% increments, and then when you get to 10%, 
you get another 5% off and you can go down to as low as 5%. It also has a built-in torch. Now this is just the screen illuminating to full brightness. You can make it flash, you can make it red. The only problem is that the screen still times out. So it doesn't really work that well as a torch. When it comes to the interface of the Phoenix 7, it works exactly the same way as it does on the Epix. You get the same gestures, the same button layout, it's exactly the same. This is where things get a little bit interesting. Remember that brownish bezel that I mentioned earlier? Well, that's part of the solar charging lens. That's right. This watch actually charges itself using solar energy. Unless, of course, you get the standard edition. But forget about that. Let's focus on the solar version. This isn't the first Garmin watch to feature solar charging. In fact, it's not even the first Phoenix watch to feature solar charging because there was a solar edition of the Phoenix 6. I can tell you where you won't find it, though. You won't find it on the Epix. The efficiency of the solar charging on this generation, however, has improved. The Phoenix 6 was expected to gain around two days additional over the standard model in the full smartwatch mode on the 47 millimeter watch. The Phoenix 7, however, is expected to double that at an additional four days. Now, there are lots of caveats and it's difficult to test, especially here in March in the UK. You can see here, I left this for three hours in direct sunlight and only achieved 11,300 lux. In that time, the battery actually dropped from 80% down to 79%. Suffice it to say that you're expected to be outside for three hours a day and achieve around 50,000 lux in that period of time in order to get the maximum gain from the solar charging. So if you're outdoors all the time and you live somewhere super sunny, then it may make the difference for you. But for me, it was more of a novelty than it was a real battery extender. Just like the Epix, the Phoenix 7 has power modes and there are four to start you off. Extended, max battery, max accuracy, and jacket mode. You can also create your own as well as edit the existing ones. Power modes allow you to get the most battery life depending on the circumstances you're in. With so many variants and so many settings to choose from, I'm not about to list all the battery life of all the different watches here. However, you can expect to get from 11 days on the smaller models all the way up to 28 days on the larger models in full smartwatch mode, with up to an additional nine days on one of the solar models, assuming the conditions are correct. You can expect from 26 to 63 hours of GPS rising to 77 hours if you've got a solar model. You can expect from 26 to 63 hours of full GPS rising to 77 hours using a solar edition and from 7 to 16 hours full GPS and music again depending on the model. There are a bunch of variables and different things you can change that will affect your battery life but rest assured you're likely to get pretty decent battery life from a Phoenix 7. The Phoenix 7 has all the same sensors as are on the Epix. It has GPS, a heart rate monitor, a barometric altimeter, a compass, a gyroscope, an accelerometer, a thermometer, an ambient light sensor, and a blood oxygen sensor. The Phoenix also has Bluetooth, Ant Plus, and Wi-Fi, just like the Epix. Glances can be accessed in the same way as they can on the Epix, using either up or down swipes or buttons. Again, glances aren't new to the Phoenix series as they were also available on the 6. If you want to know more about glances and the widgets that sit behind them, then stay subscribed to the channel because there will be a full walkthrough coming in a future video. The Phoenix 7 has the same 59 activities that are available on the Epix, as well as the same options and settings. It even has the animated workouts, which I found quite surprising. They look a little different and the animations aren't quite as smooth, but it's still pretty impressive. It may not surprise you to hear this by now, but the Phoenix 7 matches the Epix when it comes to GPS. It's got all available satellite systems as well as multiband, which is said to improve accuracy. When it comes to running, I found the GPS to be very accurate. 
Again, for the Phoenix 7, just like the Epics, I didn't find any examples where there was spurious lines or wayward points. The GPS lock on time is also just as rapid. The Phoenix 7 allows you to do just as much customization as on the Epix. You can choose from the same 165 different metrics and display up to 80 at a time for each activity. You can choose which activities are in the activities menu and you can choose which shortcuts are in the shortcuts menu. You can also change the order of both and remove ones that you don't want. When it comes to watch faces, there are slightly more on the Phoenix 7 being as there are 18 to choose from and again, you can visit the Connect IQ store for literally thousands more. You can also change the accent color and the data color. There is nothing new when it comes to smartwatch features. You get all the notifications for emails, text, pretty much whatever notifications you get on your phone, as well as calls but there's still no option to reply directly on the watch or even take a phone call on the watch because there's no microphone. So nothing's really changed. Garmin Pay is also here, but again, you will need to check to see that your bank is supported. For me personally, my bank isn't, so therefore I would not be able to use it. The Phoenix 7 supports music from Spotify, Amazon Music and Deezer as well as being able to directly load content onto your watch using the cable via a computer. If you've used a music enabled Garmin watch before, it's gonna work exactly the same way. Storage is either 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes, again, depending on the model that you opt for. Viewing the Phoenix 7 in isolation, it's an excellent watch. The depth of features is literally mind boggling and it would satisfy most users long into the future. The only problem is you can't look at it in isolation. If you're looking at the Phoenix 7, then you have got to consider the Epix, which in my opinion is probably the one you should choose. I say probably because there are a few reasons to go for the Phoenix 7 over the Epix. The Phoenix has three size options. I have small wrists, so personally, given the choice, I would go for the 42 millimeter version. If they did the Epics in a 42 millimeter version, it would be an absolute no brainer for me. Some people, however, like big watches. So if 47 millimeters isn't quite big enough for you, then you would have to go for the 51 millimeters, again, only available in the Phoenix 7. The Phoenix 7 has a battery advantage at almost all sizes over the Epics purely because of that AMOLED screen. So if battery life is your number one priority and you can afford to get the big watch, it will not only have the biggest battery because of size, it'll also be solar charging, so you'll get the extra benefit there. And lastly, it's the price. The Phoenix starts at £599 here in the UK and $699 in the US. And that's regardless of whether you get a 42 or a 47 millimeter watch. Whereas the starting price for the Epix is £800 in the UK and $900 in the US. So there's a £200 difference between the Phoenix 7 and the Epix. So if you don't think the screen is worth £200 to you, then you might wanna stick with the Phoenix 7. I have no problems recommending the Phoenix 7, but there'll always be that little asterisk that says, have you checked out the Epix? Still, if you're Garmin, it's a nice problem to have because both watches are really good. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.